weary and beat up by the elect coming to him and praying over and over and over again. He doesn't say, will you leave me alone? Stop annoying me. He's patient. He bears long with them. He listens to their prayers. Some translations render this a question whereby Christ is asking if he'll take a long time to do so. That's not it either, I believe. I believe he is saying here that the vindication will come in the future. He will avenge. That's future tense, right? But for now, God is patiently hearing and enduring the request of his elect for justice to be done. Now, God is listening and patiently hearing his saints. And one day he will avenge. Though he bear long is present tense. He will avenge, but he is bearing long now. We have the promise of future vindication by God, and we have the promise of present patience by God. He's taking care of us. God will patiently endure the prayers of his saints. That's not the idea. We think of patience and endurance as something that hurts. That's not the idea. It's not that God is like, okay, I guess I'll put up with it. Remember, God delights in prayer. We learn that from the other parable. And so as his saints come to him, he listens and he's patient. And he said, he says, I will avenge. I will vindicate. It will be made right. God will not be wearied like this judge to hear the prayers of his elect saints. God is just, not unjust. He does not get weary with the prayers of the saints. God will joyfully and patiently give us the grace to endure the injustice until he does bring vindication. God will do that. Timing is not in view, but rather quality of justice. There's no when it says here. It says he will, but it doesn't say when. We are created beings who cannot understand this life apart from our time constraints, as I said before. Just to think about it a little more, think about it this way. There is a clock in every room in this building. There is a clock on my phone. There is a clock on my microwave. There's a clock on my stove. Most people wear wristwatches. In most large city, cities, somewhere downtown, there's a big building with a big clock on it, right? Boy, we are time people, aren't we? <laughs> we are time-constrained people. Time is money. Time is of the essence. Time either flies on or drags by. Time, time, time. In fact, one of the promises of God is that while the earth remains, we can count on seasons and days and years to continue. Time. But our God is outside of time. And that's why he doesn't give a time constraint here. Time is not the concern of God. He doesn't have a clock in heaven counting down to the time when he is going to vindicate this world. He is outside of time. He is not submissive to time. Remember two things, though. In light of this time difficulty we struggle with, God will vindicate the righteous and he will do it in his timing. And his timing is always right. His timing is always perfect. That's what it means to walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not because we can see the clock. We trust the eternal justice of God's holy character. We don't interpret God's ability or compassion in light of our time constraints and desires. Well, God is not going to judge because he hasn't done it yet. We don't interpret the truth of God's word based on our time understanding, our time constraints. That's what people do and, and Peter describes it. That's what the false teachers do. He hasn't come yet, so he's not going to come at all. And it says they're willingly ignorant of this. That the same attitude was characterized at the time of Noah. God won't judge. He's not going to vindicate. He's not going to avenge. But he says in verse 8, I tell you, that he will avenge them speedily. Speedily is not the idea of in a soon. It's not what it means there. Speedily means suddenly, quickly. Um, the time of Noah, when God told Noah to build the ark. Noah built this big ark. It wasn't raining. Kind of embarrassing, I suppose, could be. No rain. Noah preached. No rain, Noah preached, he preached the judgment of God, he preached the judgment of God, no rain. It only took God 40 days and 40 nights to completely decimate the earth. The judgment of God was long-suffering 
long-suffering, long-suffering. But when it came, it came as a deluge. You know, that's the way the returning of the Son of Man is going to be. God is long-suffering. He is long-suffering. He is long-suffering. But when He comes, it's going to be a deluge. A deluge of wrath. Justice will be meted out. God will avenge. To avenge speedily means that God judges. He does swiftly. It's like my two boys who are laying in their room at night, supposed to be sleeping. But I hear giggling and whispering and sometimes a yelp or two. We warn them a few times, remind them generously that it's time to go to sleep. But at some point, usually, they hear this movement on the couch as dad gets up and walks swiftly to the room. It's eerily quiet in the room when that happens. Why? They know dad is coming and he means business. That's what the Lord says here. He says, I tell you, that he will avenge them sweet speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. The Son of Man's coming. It seems like the vindication that God is talking about here, that we are praying for as saints, is the ultimate vindic vindication, the final judgment, it seems like here. When the Son of Man cometh. Uh, it doesn't say this literally, but it seems to imply from the context, when he comes finally, when it's done, when he makes his ultimate coming, when he comes in judgment... There's an illusion by Christ that shows me this passage is speaking of that ultimate judgment. Not necessarily personal vindication in my life now. I may never see justice meted out in my life to things that have happened with me. But I do know that the judge of all the earth will mete out judgment when the Son of Man cometh. I do know that's going to happen. The coming of the Son of Man, Jesus the judge, when he comes to judge those still without life in Christ. The ultimate and final judgment is in view here. When he comes finally, there's an implication when I read this that we ought not to cease praying until we see his final vindication. Don't stop praying. Don't quit praying. Don't lose heart. God will come back. The Son of Man is coming and He will vindicate the righteous. Those that are righteous because of Christ's righteousness on their account. Those that have put their faith in Jesus Christ. They are the righteous ones. They are the saints. They are the elect. They will be vindicated by the coming of the Son of Man. And that is something, my Christian brothers and sisters, to glory and delight and joy in. God will vindicate the righteous. He will set things right. Don't give up. Don't lose heart in prayer for righteous justice on this earth. Don't give up. God hears and delights in answering the prayers of his elect. We don't need like this widow to twist and to seek uh, to cavort God into our hands. We need not beat him up through asking because he delights in answering the prayers of his elect, his saints. But my friends, faithful, consistent Prayer is expected based upon the fact that God is faithful and He will vindicate the elect. We are not assured when it will be, but we are assured that it will be swift and it will be just. That will happen. Abraham, considering the judgment of God, said this in Genesis 18.25, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? I get a little emotional when I read that verse. I love that verse. There's a lot of questions I don't understand in this world. A lot of things I don't know. Why? But shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Won't God do right? And yes, he will. He will vindicate. I'm not bothered by hell. I'm not bothered by the judgment of God. The reality of a loving God sending sinners to hell makes more sense than a God who would unjustly overlook the wickedness and corruption in mankind. In fact, it's a true statement that we might be able to say that's why God made hell. <laughs> for justice to be done. Now obviously we know the lake of fire was created for Satan and his angels. But if there's not a hell, 
it renders my God.